Hello friends, my name is Luke the Gamer Duke. I enjoy playing, dissecting, and talking about video games. Today in Diablo 2 Resurrected, I'm back in the tombs of Tal Rasha. But I've got a bone to pick with Nightmare. When I took my Barbarian through a while ago, I had an incredibly difficult time finding good Nightmare items, also called exceptional items, during a natural playthrough. The first thing I remember being excited about was finding Ariad's face off Nathiliac deep in Act 5. As the Barbarian was my first character, Magic Find wasn't stacked, though I always adorned Magic Find as much as possible, but maybe it just wasn't enough. In normal mode, I grinded a few runs through the tombs with higher Magic Find and found some pretty good to great stuff, which had potential for use through Act 3, arguably into Act 4. So I'm wondering, can that same logic be applied here in Nightmare, only with more Magic Find and more runs? Let's find out! The Tombs of Talrasha are the final dungeons in Act 2 and the last stop to gain some additional experience or equipment upgrades prior to your fight not only with Duriel, but also to your descent into... pain and misery. Exceptional items can be incredible upgrades from your normal items, and some of the uniques can be the most desired in the game. I'm running with 184% magic fine, which is the most I can do at the moment. And we're looking for exceptionals, right? We are in Nightmare after all. Unique sets and rares with good rolls only here. I will accept higher tier normal uniques though, since they can be powerful enough to take through most of Nightmare. I'll highlight any runes and worthwhile trinkets as I go, then pull a rune tally at the end as well. We're looking for items not just to defeat Duriel, but also take into Nightmare as far as possible. Let's see if we can find them in 10 runs. Run 1 starts with a decent razor bow, nothing great but not too shabby. Came across Prevaric Keep Tower Shield, which is still pretty good. Great Fire Resist with good defense and block chance. A Cast Rate plus Resistance Ring and a decent charm. But only one Hell Rune here. Run 2 starts off with a pretty well rolled Lance. The Merc could make use of that. This Throwing Spear actually turned out pretty well. Ooh, what's that? Spirit Shroud. Nice. Plus one to all skills, plus ten life replenishment, and cannot be frozen are great for anyone getting in the thick of it. Then a circlet dropped, which came out pretty stacked. All resistances accounted for, and plus ten replenish life. Found more runes this time, too. A Shale, Tear, F, and L. Run three started slow with this salad. It's eh but eventually came across the unique Light Plate, Heavenly Garb, which is still great for casters with plus energy, mana regen, and plus 10 to all resistances. But if that wasn't good enough, after plowing through these ghoul lords, unique serpent skin? Which of course is Skin of the Viper Magi, with a damn near perfect roll. Plus one to all skills, caster rate, awesome resistances and magic reduction. Only missing five on resistances for the max roll. Absolutely awesome find. This great Pelum came out pretty well, but then another normal unique. Terhaunch Greaves, which is still pretty good, especially with the 20% to run and plus 10 resistances. Then an Am, two Shales, and an Eld. We're looking pretty good so far, I'd say. Run 4, however, was quite the opposite. Found absolutely nothing. I was starting to get discouraged, but then I happened to see a... Partisan? Insight is simply absurd. If you find a 4 socket pull arm, it's a wrap. Oh, come on, come on. Daddy needs a 4 socket, Daddy needs a 4 socket. Yes! Ola Harris! I'll put that to good use. Alright, so back at it. And and then there was there was nothing. Uh, a pair of towels and actually a co, but not a single item worth mentioning. So you get nothing! This entire run was just a build insight, but hey, maybe that was worth it. Run 5 was an interesting mix, starting with the General's Tando Liga. With decent enhanced damage, mana stolen, and slows target, but might be a bit behind the curve at this point. Then came across Riphook Razorbow, which is awesome by every metric. 
great attack speed, insane enhanced damage, percent life stolen, open wounds, slows target, and with plus 35 mana, this thing is a shredder. Came across another circlet worth raising an eyebrow at with great attack rating, percent life stolen, good energy, and resist all. A pretty good amulet, and then an am, a tau, a ral, and a nef to finish this one off. Run 6 only produced a pair of normal uniques. Umbral's disc might be teetering on the edge of useless at this point. And gold wrap is a good addition if you need magic fine, but that's basically it. Then a ral, and I guess a decent charm. That was all for this one. Run 7 was nothing but a handful of modest rares, which I'll blast through here. A razor bow, which is decent. A Francisca, which has pretty good damage and a rondel if you're into those sort of things. An average charm, and then a soul, and an amrune. <sighs> Yawn. Okay, okay, okay. I've done seven of these runs, and with seven tombs, that's, let, let's see, carry the one. Seven times seven is 49. That's 49 tombs. Granted, I found a couple diamonds. The amount of rough I've had to go through to find the diamonds, I think is crazy. So I think I wanna fight crazy, with crazy. Now you wanna get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts. Oh yeah. Oh, it's happening. Oh, this is happening all right. Yeah. And now with 284% magic find, let's get crazy. And with run 8 going, we start off with another thrower, a decent symbol N. Then out pops a unique cutlass. Cold Steel Eye, great enhanced damage. Percent mana stolen, 50% deadly strike, blinds and slows target. This is a good one right here. Found a Jagged Star, which isn't too shabby. Then probably one of the most useless uniques in the game. Unless you really need poison resist. And then another diamond. These stupid ghoul lords die. Oh, oh, what's this? What is this we have here? A dragon shield? That is Tiamat's rebuke. Now this is something to take forward. Three caster spells when struck, adds all kinds of ridiculous elemental damage, crazy enhanced defense, and plus 26 resistances, which is unfortunately on the lower end of the roll chances, but hey, can't be too upset with this one. Then a resistance amulet and a handful of good charms here. And rounding it out with a Rowl and a Neff. So I'd say the extra 100% magic find uh, made a difference. So let's keep this going. Run 9 was essentially all rares, but some of them turned out pretty good. This Chuko New came out with decent damage. A Battle Sword, again, decent for damage. This Nout came out pretty loaded. Good enhanced damage with added cold damage and plus percent damage to demons and undead. A Tigulated Male rolled with great defense and some resistances. Then a round shield came out pretty good for what it is. And ooh, a unique ring. Nagel ring, of course. Like I haven't already found enough of those. A magic fine amulet. And a hell and tear will round this one out. Not quite as good as the round before, but still the rares turned out much better than with 184. And now we reach the final run, run 10, and man, it really loves dropping throwers, doesn't it? A pretty decent harpoon, though. Gotta get through all this mess. And drop the death mask. Which is Blackhorn's face. A bit lightning specific, but the ladder of fixes are certainly helpful. A naga, which came out decent for damage. This greatsword rolled pretty well for a barb. Some sharkskin gloves with a good roll. Magic find on gloves, boots, and belts are always welcome bonuses. And rounding out the Amazon finds here with Sky Strike. Plus one Amazon skills, enhanced attack speed and damage, 
Crazy added lightning damage and plus energy is nothing to sleep on here. A decent attack charm, and a thole and ort to finish it off. Aw, oh, you didn't think I wasn't going to fight Duriel, did you? There's no way I'm running 70 tombs and not finishing it off of Duriel. I'm not too worried about this particular encounter though, since I'm fairly overleveled at this point. He is still a tough son of a bitch though, and takes some endurance and firepower to get through. Melee's actually might still have a bit more difficult time, but with casting and summoning, I'm pretty safe here. I am very anxious about his loot, however. Generally after my Duriel fights, I'm left feeling a bit underwhelmed with his drops, and I'm wondering how much this magic find will have an effect when it's said and done. Oh. Oh my. Well, what do we have here? Let's go ahead and check out Woe Stave Hellbeard, which does have some very notable affixes. Open wounds, prevents monster heal, blinds, freezes, and slows target, and minus 50 enemy defense per hit. Granted, the damage is a bit lacking. I've actually never found the unique bearded axe before, so my eyebrows are raised here. Whoa. Spell steal, huh? Well, this is interesting. This is very interesting. An axe designed with casting in mind. I guess for a paladin, or maybe for an elemental druid? Caster rate, great enhanced damage, plus 100 mana, mana regen, and magic damage reduction. Firestorm might be a bit useless at this point without the synergies, but Holy Bolt, Decrepify, and most certainly Teleport are quite welcomed. Can't wait to see what the repair costs are. Quick tip to not bankrupt yourself though. Take an Ort Rune and any chipped gem with your weapon into the cube to instantly repair and recharge that item. And as promised, here is the final tally of all the runes found from highest level to lowest level. And lastly, for what it's worth, there was a bunch of experience to be gained in here. For reference, I started at level 47, and through the first run, I gained four levels. Run two got me three levels, and run three got me almost another three levels. Then diminishing returns set in, but at the end of it, I got to level 60. So if you feel you need some leveling before Act 3, the tombs can be where you get it. And so with 10 Talrasha runs, equaling 70 tombs in total, and 10 Canyon runs included, I guess it can be safe to say that the tombs of Talrasha could indeed be worth some run-throughs in Nightmare. Make sure you have magic find though. I would say it should be well into the latter 100s. I have a hunch earlier findings would have been much less so if the magic find was sitting in the lower, even mid 100s. But if you're entering Nightmare and need some items, throw some magic find on and take a run or two through the tombs. Maybe you'll be as surprised at what you find as I was. Thank you so much for watching this video. That will conclude this analysis of magic finding your way through the tombs of Talrasha in Nightmare Mode. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting that like button to help others find it. Remember to subscribe for more fun Diablo, ARPG, and other gameplay analytics, and feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments. Do you go through the tombs in Nightmare, or skip them completely? Have I changed your mind at all? Thanks again, and I'll see you on the next one. Adios.